Alright you guys, what's happening? Welcome back to the first match day reaction video of 2019, but to be honest, not a very happy one. Aberdeen won, Stenhouse Muir won today in the Scottish Cup fourth round. A nothing game. I can't really say that Stenhouse Muir didn't deserve the draw either. And yeah, just a really, really disappointing start to 2019 for Aberdeen. So like I say, I can't really sit here and say that uh, Stenhouse Muir won any value for the draw. Granted, they didn't create a lot today, but neither did Aberdeen. We had one period in the second half where we created a few chances. But other than that, I thought we were very sluggish today. Just a really, really poor performance. I think overall it had been a really positive week for Aberdeen this week. I think obviously getting Max Lowe back on loan, which we didn't expect, was, was a right bonus. And uh, signing Greg Stewart as well was really, really good. Obviously, he's on loan as well. I'm not sure what's going to happen with that one, but I kind of hope we can keep him. But um, I thought we had a right good boost with those guys coming in, and I thought that would really carry over to today. I just thought overall we looked like a team that thought, if we just turn up, we're going to win this game. And I think that that was really, really disappointing, because especially when you go into a game with that attitude, it doesn't really turn out very well very often. I can't really fault Derek McInnes today, although granted, it's him that should really get the team up for it. But he picked the team that I think a lot of us would have picked today. So I can't really complain about that. We had, obviously, Gary mckay Stephen coming back for his uh, concussion. So that was a boost. We had Greg Stewart coming in and we had Max Lowe coming in. So I thought, honestly, like we were set up to just go out and play our game and win the game. But it's all about application and I didn't think we applied ourselves well today. To be honest, the first half was so boring, it was unbelievable. The only real moment worth talking about was the goal. It's decent build-up play. It ends up with Graham Shinney on the left. He's cut it back and Max Lowe's put it away. So, hey, great way to mark his return. But, like I say... Just nothing, nothing was happening in that first half. It was just a boring, boring game where I thought that Stenismere were organised, they were comfortable. And yeah, we cut them open quite well with that one goal. But other than that, we didn't create that much in the first half. And I just thought the game was kind of petering out. You would also think as well, scoring on like 20 minutes would really give the team a boost. But it didn't seem to make a difference. We were just kind of going through the motions, thinking that one goal would be enough the day. Second half, we actually, to be fair... Uh, at the start of the second half, we did come out and try and put the game to bed. We created a few decent chances, but nothing really came off. There was Greg Stewart hitting the bar for the edge of the box after a really, really good turn. I actually thought Stewart had a good game the day. I think that there's no many players on the park the day that you can say, yeah, they had a very, very good game. But I really enjoyed Greg Stewart today. I think especially because he was playing his right position. When he was playing for us last time, he was quite often stuck out on the right wing. And when he's out on the right wing, he can be effective, but... What he tends to do is he gets out there, he heads towards the byline, he cuts back onto his left and he puts a ball in. And it's no his game. His game is running at people but having options, you know what I mean? And like he's such a he's such an influencer in the middle of the park that I like I, I like Greg Stewart and I was delighted to see him back and I was especially delighted when I saw the team that he was likely going to be playing behind Cosgrove. So I mean Stevie Mays played alright, but Greg Stewart is a difference maker there. We saw it with Kilmarnock for the first half of the season. We saw it when he played for Dundee as well. I thought we kinda wasted him in his first time round, but it was pleasing to see him play through the middle this time and I hope that keeps up. Granted, he did get punted out to the wing for the last ten minutes when we took off McGinn and brought on uh, Stevie May, but that's ten minutes, you know, you're you're looking for a winner. I'm not really gonna criticize that but if he ends up getting stuck out on the wing for whatever reason soon I'll be kind of disappointed. Realistically in that period in the second half we probably should have put the game to bed but overall we were still just no really playing at great pace and I think if you go back to when we won at Ibrox uh, last month one of the things we did really well that day um, was remain organised but one of the reasons it was quite easy was because Rangers were just slow on the ball and allowed us to get organised and I think we were kind of guilty of that today we were very slow and sluggish and ponderous on the ball and it allowed Stenhouse Muir if they ever did get a wee bit stretched to just get themselves back settled and a lot of credit has to go to them they were organised they were composed as well which is massive you can be organised but when you're not composed you can end up getting pulled up pulled apart once or twice but that didn't really happen to them the day so you got to give them a lot of credit and their goal was actually a very very good goal so uh, they got the ball out wide it's a great delivery to be honest for the left and it's Mark McGuigan with a header smashes it home it's a great header Lewis didn't have a hope and yeah like a very very good goal that they scored and I can't really take anything away from them the day either because I thought they they worked hard like I say, I thought they were organised. And yeah, they just never really lost that composure. They never looked like a team that was panicking at the back. And that can happen late in the game as well. And I think, obviously, them scoring with about 20 minutes to go. You're expecting the Alamo from us. But it didn't really come. We had a couple of half chances. But realistically, today's game was just a nothing game. And it was a nothing performance for Aberdeen. 
So I want to give a lot of credit to Stenhouse Muir. I thought they were really good. Uh, but, I mean, Aberdeen, I've got to take a lot, a lot of criticism for that performance today. We looked unprepared and we just didn't look up for the fight. And the thing is, like, at the moment, now that we've got the winter break, you have that mad December and you can have a wee bit of a mad start to January when you come back as well. January into February. Whereas right now, we are just adding another game. We're adding another midweek game because we've got to go to Oakle View for the replay. And a lot of people will have bad memories of Oakle View from uh, the mid-90s. I think I'm right in saying we've never beaten Stenhouse Muir in our history, which is weird because they were our first ever game. And then, obviously... We had that nightmare in 95, and then the day obviously isn't as bad as 95, but I mean, it doesn't feel good. I just, I'm really disappointed with Aberdeen the day. I thought it was a terrible way to get the campaign restarted. So, uh, before we before we wrap up the video, I guess we need to kind of talk about the transfer window. I mean, obviously, we've brought in Lowe and Stewart, like we touched upon. That was really, really pleasing. We needed a left back, and we could have kind of done with Greg Stewart when he became available. So, I'm delighted we got him. I still feel like we could do with another centre half. Uh, I don't know when Mikey Devlin's going to be back. And Considine is what he is. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think a lot of people will, will defend Considine because he's local and because he's been in the team for so long. But I, I feel like we could do with somebody else to play that role. I certainly didn't have any desire to see Considine's contract renewed. So... I would quite like to see us at least try and bring in another centre half. Certainly to play next to Scott McKenna until Devlin's back, but we'll see what happens there. We could still do with a few different things, to be honest. I think our centre midfield is alright. We could maybe do with some depth there. If we got the chance to go out and sign a proper winger, though, I think it would be worth pursuing because McGinn has been okay at best this season. Mackay Stephen has been the usual. He blows hot and cold. When he's good, he's unplayable. When he's bad, he's mostly anonymous. And obviously he was missing some time as well. But um, I think that realistically our team is missing something. It's certainly missing a proper goal scorer up front as well. I mean, Cosgrove has obviously been banging in the goals uh, before the break. And I, he got a couple uh, last week in the friendly, but he barely was in the game the day. He was really disappointed. And he was he's far from the only one, to be honest. But I just feel like we could do with some more options up front. I th I would have liked to have seen James Wilson start today. I thought he was fantastic at Livingston when he came on. I wouldn't have minded seeing him get a start today, but he didn't even get on the park, which was a bit frustrating. I think the more pressing thing for us, though, is holding on to guys. Graham Shinney and Gary Mackay Stephen are out of contract in the summer. There's a lot of interest for uh, one of the New York teams in Gary Mackay Stephen. And I saw a lot of people say it would show a lack of ambition. To me, you get a chance to play football and live in New York. You know, it's understandable that your head would be turned at that. I don't really have any problem if he decides to take that offer. Graham Shinney, Christ knows what's going to happen with him. I kind of have the feeling, because he's a local lad and because he grew up an Aberdeen fan, I kind of get the feeling that if he was going to sign, he'd have done it by now, to be honest. So we'll see what happens with these two. But um, at the moment, I do have a lot of hope for that. And obviously, we'd the, the likelihood is we'll keep Shinny for the rest of the season. I don't know what's happening with GMS, obviously. Scott McKenna's the other guy as well. They're ha it's actually been quite quiet on the Scott McKenna front so far. Considering how mad they got in August, eh, I'm quite surprised it's been quiet so far. But he's been playing very well. So, you know, if it stays quiet, I'm not going to complain. But I think, obviously, for us, it's going to be a case of a couple of things. We've lost... A, we, we were actually quite good... In the first few years of the Derek McInnes era of not losing guys, we were very good for like holding on to the guys we really wanted to. And then gradually there started to be, I guess, a bit of movement. Obviously you lose guys like Kenny McLean, you lose guys like Johnny Hayes, you lose guys like Ryan Jack. And it does make a difference after a while, you know what I mean? It does make a difference to keep losing guys. And losing Shinny and GMS certainly isn't going to kill us. But when you put it on top of everything else, it's it, it could really make a difference. But hopefully we can definitely hold on to both of them, at least until the end of the season. And I guess we're going to see what happens. But um, again, really, really disappointed with the performance today. But uh, we got a chance to put it right on Wednesday against Hamilton. So hopefully we will do all right in that game. Granted, we tend to have a lot of trouble on that plastic pitch at Hamilton. We had that one game. It was on a Sunday a few years ago where we absolutely hammered them 3 nothing. and it could have been 6 or 7 or 8. But as enjoyable as that visit was to New Douglas Park, th there's 4 or 5 that have just been shocking, to be honest. So, Hamilton on Wednesday night, no an easy game. Then we've got Kamarnik at home next Saturday, so that's going to be really, really tough. So hopefully we can really get our act together against Hamilton on Wednesday, play much better than the day, because if we play like that the day, we'll not get a result of Hamilton. And if we played like that against Kamarnik, we'll probably get beat. So... 
Um, but I'm hoping it's just a one-off and I'm hoping it's a wee bit of a wake-up call. I'm hoping that when we get to the replay at Oakle View, the, the guys just apply themselves properly, go out and get the job done because if we were to get knocked out by Stenhouse Muir at this point, that would be completely unacceptable, especially after getting a scare in the first game. I just thought we were so shite today and yeah, I didn't really want to talk about it anymore. But uh, so we'll wrap up just now. Uh, really, really disappointing return for us, but what the fuck can you do? So, like I said before, credit to Stenhouse Muir. They definitely deserve the draw of the day. They are a credit to their club. Considering this season hasn't been good for them, I think they're bottom of League One. So to come to Aberdeen and get a draw and deserve it, I think is great credit to them. But for us, we've got a lot of soul searching to do. But uh, we we had a very positive December. Hopefully this is just a blip. But I'm going to wrap this up just now. Uh, if you enjoyed, please hit the subscribe button. We've been trying to grow, grow the channel and I appreciate everybody who's uh, hit that red button so far. Like the video as well because it helps it get it out there. And if you know anybody who enjoy it, share it with them. I've been QMJ. I really don't know what I talk about this game anymore. So I'll talk to you again sometime.